cosmologists wondered it was a black hole and named it Cygnus X1. Stephen Hawking's groundbreaking theories depended on the existence of black holes. In the case of Cygnus X1, he made an unusual insurance bet against himself with fellow physicist Kip Thorne. This is my bet with Stephen. Whereas Stephen Hawking has such a large investment in black holes and desires an insurance policy, and whereas Kip Thorne likes to live dangerously, Stephen Hawking bets one year subscription to Pence that Cygnus X1 does not contain a black hole. This is signed in 1974. I had done a lot of work on black holes, but it would have been wasted if it had turned out they didn't exist. But at least, I would have the consolation of winning my bet. It was calculated that Cygnus X1 was once a star some 40 times the mass of our Sun. It had shrunk to just five times that mass. exerting an enormous gravitational pull on matter around it. It turned out to be a textbook case of a black hole. It was this euphoria that these things we're studying, they're really out there. Kip Thorne won his bet. I won a subscription, a one-year subscription to Penthouse magazine. You have to remember this is the 1970s. That might not be politically correct today. Stephen Hawking's theories relied upon the existence of black holes. Observations of Cygnus X1 proved they did exist. Stephen Hawking was on a quest to unite two opposing sides of modern science, general relativity and quantum mechanics. If he achieved it, he will have a theory of everything, one equation that could reveal the underlying plan of the universe. It might even explain how it exploded into being. To find out, he needed to piece back together an explosion that detonated 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang. But how? He started by making the astonishing prediction that black holes could explode. in a very similar way to the Big Bang. His next question was, could anything come out of an exploding black hole? If this theoretical explosion was similar to the Big Bang, would it also release a high-energy stew of particles? An understanding of how black holes create particles will lead to a similar understanding of how the Big Bang created everything in the universe. It could be a mini version of the moment of creation. But all of this remains theoretical. No one knew whether black holes exploded then. And the quest for definitive proof continues to this day. On the 11th of June 2008, NASA launched the state-of-the-art Fermi telescope. Designed to scan the heavens for the last gasp of a minute black hole. What we're be searching for is a tiny object, a microscopic object, no bigger than an individual proton, the core of a nucleus, and yet it's shiny apparently like one of the brightest objects in the whole sky. But the search for these staggeringly bright theoretical objects isn't as easy as it sounds. Space is filled with gamma rays from exploding stars that could mask the signature of an exploding black hole. So here's what the whole sky would look like if you had gamma ray eyes. We hope to see the individual black hole at the very end of its lifetime making an explosion. And that could happen really anywhere on this uh, image. And that's why it's so incredibly interesting, because one of those contributions could be the individual primordial black holes producing their Hawking radiation. The team continues to search for evidence of a black hole explosion producing Hawking radiation. The five would be a scientific milestone, as so eluded them.
While the search continues for minute black holes that could mirror the moment of creation, another mystery threatened to spoil Stephen Hawking's quest for a theory of everything. In the moment after the Big Bang, something strange happened to gravity. It inexplicably got weaker, a change that would be crucial to our very existence. Gravity is actually the least understood force in nature, much weaker than other forces known by science, like electromagnetism, a force clearly evident in violent storms. It also binds atoms together into everything we see around us. At the instant of the Big Bang, scientists think electromagnetism and gravity were of equal strength. But as the universe expanded, gravity weakened dramatically. Cosmologist Sean Carroll is trying to work out what happened. Gravity is something we notice every day. We drop things. We have to work against it to climb a set of stairs or to move around. It seems to us like a powerful, important force in our lives. So the puzzle is that, in fact, gravity isn't really as strong as we think. I can take something very, very tiny, like a set of keys, and if I drop it, it could smash something far below. Nevertheless, something as small as this magnet can be more powerful than gravity just because the electrical and magnetic forces here are intrinsically more powerful. Just a tiny little magnet is able to overcome the gravitational force exerted by the entire Earth. Why gravity suddenly weakened after the Big Bang remains a mystery. Hawking's theory of everything should have revealed the inner workings of the universe, but it couldn't explain the gravity conundrum. Something was wrong with the blueprint. He set to work trying to solve the mystery, joined by leading scientists in the field. But only a few members of this inner circle could understand his speech. He had to painstakingly dictate his scientific papers. This was a slow, grueling process. His family worried he was pushing himself too hard. There was always this terrible, terrible fear whenever anything went wrong or he started choking or coughing or he got an infection, that this was it. Because you just never knew what might happen next. His family's worst fears were realized in 1985 when he was on a trip to Geneva. Aged 44, he collapsed with pneumonia. An emergency tracheotomy saved his life, but severed his vocal cords. Unable to communicate and cut off from the rest of the world, Stephen Hawking found himself in his own black hole.